to the war in Ukraine and Western officials say Russian troops could be preparing to withdraw from part of the city of Kherson, which they've held since the start of the war. Ukraine has been talking up an offensive to capture the city since the summer, but progress is slow and so far they've just retaken some surrounding farmland. Kherson straddles the Dnipro River. Reports suggest Russian commanders may be pulling back troops to the eastern side of the river, which is easier to defend. Our international editor Jeremy Bowen, cameraman Fred Scott and producer Kathy Long have spent the last few days travelling between Mykolaiv and the front lines around Kherson. In the trenches, a mile or so from the Russian perimeter around Kherson, soldiers from the Ukrainian 63rd Brigade have learned to be cautious. They're digging in for a long winter. I love my dugout, he says. It's going to be warm. This is the ground where months of optimistic talk from Ukraine's leaders of a Kherson offensive has collided with the stark reality of pushing Russia back. Moving forward, a counter-offensive is complicated to plan for, and it's a threat to people's lives. We have to take count of everything. That's our job as commanders, to keep our men alive. Outside Mykolaiv, the city facing occupied Kherson, they don't believe the Russians will fold. Piles of used-up tank shells show how hard it's been. On the Mykolaiv front, the soldiers say they don't have the combat power to match Russia's numbers or heavy guns. They've got more military equipment, more people. Their soldiers are not trained, but they just charge forward shouting hurrah. We don't have as many bullets as they have people. You can see why the Hesson offensive is taking a lot of time. It's flat, open ground. They're under the Russian guns. And this is what happens to them every day. That's why, since the summer, they've been talking about it, and it's hard to move forward. The ruins of Mikhailov's regional governor's office, destroyed early in the war, are a constant reminder of what Russia can do. Here as well, no one believes Russia's defeat is inevitable. General Dmitry Marchenko, the commander credited with stopping the Russian advance, now coordinates plans to recapture Kherson. First of all, we need uh, reactive artillery that can hit up to 300 kilometers from us, and we need an air defense system, basics for any army in the world that wants to go on the offensive. An enemy who can do this, the general believes, cannot be beaten without overwhelming force, which Ukraine wants but does not have. Clean water is trucked into Mykolaiv because Russia blew up the waterworks. In the queue, someone said they can't bring us to our knees. Defiance doesn't stop fear or anguish. It's painful, says Oksana. Everyone here is crying inside. They're worried too about doing this in winter and the freeze. Close by this week, Russian missiles have hit civilian houses. One of the residents here was killed. People with very little have lost everything. Not much was left to salvage in this house. Lyubov has two sons in the army. The Russians were saying hello, she said. Then everything fell on my head. What is so difficult for people is the unpredictability of a strike that comes in the middle of the night when they think they're relatively safe at home. Her neighbor, a firefighter used to rescuing others, was rescuing himself. We can't stop fighting. We are on guard for our country. No one but us will protect it. I've faced this so many times. Now it has come to my house. The main thing is that we are alive. Everything else, we can start again.
The pity of war envelops Mikolaev, the price of local victories that keep the pressure on the Russians. If it comes to a battle for Kherson, the price and the pity rise sharply. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Mikolaev.